from Crimea Media in Johannesburg, this is the real Kanye report. Mining technology integration partner Twyco Mining Services launched US-based robotics developer Boston Dynamics quadruped robot known as Spot in South Africa last year. Crimea Media contributing editor Adama Slater attended the launch. The dog-like robot can perform a variety of tasks and is designed to undertake several of them in a fully autonomous manner thanks to SPOT's 360-degree field of view and collision avoidance systems. SPOT was launched at the Gorik City theme park, which gave Dwarka Mining Services access to Old Crown Mine Shop, where SPOT's underground mining capability was showcased. Dwarka Mining Service CEO and founder talks to Kruma Media's Dana Slater about SPOT's capabilities. Hi, I'm Jamie van Square. I'm the CEO and founder of Dwarka Mining Services. So Boston Dynamics SPOT Enterprise Platform is an agile robot designed for industrial remote inspections um, and something that we're seeing very valuable from the mining industry. As a mining technology platform operating across Africa, we're always very excited about technology that makes sense in African mining. Uh, Boston Dynamics Spot Enterprise Platform is really useful for a number of mining applications. We are seeing the remote ability to plug in, to gain visualization on a number of payloads, whether that's LiDAR scanning on our Emerson Harbor map, whether it's cameras mounted on the payload, infrared, uh, acoustic sensing, there's an amazing amount of data that can be had from being able to jump on the back of SPOT and uh, experiment and inspect on the back of it. So the interesting thing about our journey with uh, Boston Dynamics SPOT Enterprise Robots is that we've been actually doing a lot of work in uh, drone um, data capture. So drone data capture by virtue of the size you're flying in and the autonomy that we're pushing it to fly in is limited. Uh, generally something around the two to three meter uh, range that makes it very difficult in an underground platinum chrome narrow, uh, narrow reef mining application where spot by virtue of its size and actually being a quadruped working off the ground is actually very useful so moving off drone as opposed to our experience in wheeled or tracked robots is what we've seen very impressive about the boston dynamic spot enterprise being able to enter access low hanging uh, low hanging walls and hanging heights uh, definitely being able to access areas previously unattainable, unsupported um, by virtue of safety, uh, efficiency, as well as that visibility we've spoken very strongly about. Definitely a platform that's going to be um, second to none in this in the narrow reef mining application. So the interesting thing about SPOT is that you can put it into a number of applications and a number of environments. Because it's ruggedized, because it's able to uh, attach a number of payloads, it's very useful across applications and across industries. So we touched on today, obviously mining was a front and center application. We're talking about survey reconciliations, we're talking about remote inspections, we talked about uh, first responder applications, vis-a-vis uh, -vis someone being having to go down as a first responder, uh, first aid event, scanning pillars pre and post blast, um, the big thing about the Spot Enterprise is you've got this ability to rapidly charge and offload data off its dock. Um, that ability to do long, unlimited mission auto walks as well, being able to do repeatability scans, repeatability inspections, certainly allows our clients um, that, that, uh, that capability to measure uh, scans on scans, inspections from previous to post, um, and that's the kind of value in the mining. In oil and gas, we're talking about the similar kinds of inspections. Again, it's a challenging environment. We're getting people um, into those environments is often hazardous, uh, often harmful, and being able to send a, a robot to do that inspection, um, often remotely, as in offshore, onshore rigs, uh, is a valuable tool. The other thing that's valuable is around skills uh, and an ability to get people to site. We've been stuck in a COVID bubble we're getting people in and out of uh, access to mines, access to underground. I think that's put a spotlight, and excuse the pun, around um, our ability to get data from areas where we previously didn't think it was possible. And that's what Spot's unlocking. So Spot, as we say, is an agile robot. You would have seen me earlier doing push-ups against him. Uh, and the ability there with Spot, and excitingly, is it's able to navigate really uh, interesting terrain. It's got 360 degree coverage around it um, with a series of cameras. So it's able to sense, guide, and then also navigate around that to make sure that it's not colliding as an obstacle detection capability. You'd be surprised what SPOT can handle. Uh, in the underground environment with our initial tests, um, loose rocks, uh, at high inclinations, there really is uh, nothing that SPOT cannot do what we see in this underground mining space. And you would have seen earlier as well of stairs. Stairs 
uh, is, a, is a simple task and an AI recognition. It simply go up and you can even reverse spot down back down the stairs. So certainly a place we can looking like non-mining into your architecture, engineering and construction, into that building environment and that BIM space. We're going to see spot uh, tackling not only mining, but also on surface in um, the construction space as well. Hi, I'm Ritav Lilatala, Operations Director of Dwyka Mining Services. Spot basically literally has eyes on the back of his head and two sides of his belly. So Spot, as Boston Dynamics created him, is supposed to be in semi-autonomous and leading to full autonomous uh, mobile robot. Right? He's supposed to move on his own, get wherever he needs. And if you're going to move on your own in places you don't know, you need to see it. You need to be able to navigate your world. So what they did is they put 360 cameras all around Spot. So one at the front, normal eyes, one at the back, and two on the sides. So what Spot, how Spot actually sees the world, he gets like a 360 almost camera view of all his sides. And he uses that and, you know, some pre-programmed to say, always stay away like 1.2, 2 meters away from an object. And whatever we tell him, he's going to then try and go anywhere but then he now has to say, okay, my front eye says I'm like one meter away, but my side eye says now I'm a bit too close, so I'm gonna pull myself back. So that's what it uses to kind of stabilize, and that's the beauty of having a four-legged, kind of articulated robot, because then he can actually stabilize and kind of also creep into places where a normal tracked machine would not be able to get into. So controlling spot, it's a bit daunting, to be honest. Uh, I mean, we play around with, with drones. It's literally like playing a video game. It's just it's a very expensive piece of equipment. Uh, it's not that difficult, to be honest. I think my kid, he's gonna want to play around with Spot, and I, I'm not gonna let him because it's not our Spot, but actually, it's that easy. Because you can use a touch screen to just navigate, and the touch screen is great because you're telling Spot where to go. So whatever Spot sees, you tell him where to go. So you put a point on the screen in Spot's field of view and you say, Spot, get there. And then you can literally put the controller down. And what Spot's gonna do, he's gonna walk, oh, obstacle, I'm gonna walk around it. Because I know where I wanna get. And even if someone tries to cross his path, he's gonna still kind of, oh, oh let me navigate something. So that's the beauty of the autonomy. And that's the collision avoidance again of the 360 cameras. So what you can do now with Spot is add other payloads. So payload is now something you add on top of Spot. So Spot Standard, he's got built-in eyes front, side back. Now what we have with the one that you've been seeing now, Enterprise Spot, we've got the 360 cameras so like, like proper full color, you know, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, high definition, but also has a pan tilt zoom infrared camera at the top. And now that's great for inspections. Right? If you're talking about the crowd that's here and our clients, industrial mining, we need to see things where we can't necessarily always send a person to go look. Because either what, we just take an underground snap, we just blast it. He can't go down. Oh, snap. The fan has stopped. So there is no ventilation. Everything is fine, but we cannot legally send people down. So now we can send Spot to go do asset inspection. Because once he gets there, then you can now start pan, tilt, zooming, tell him. And you can actually pre-program that, that path for Spot to go. So Spot is smart enough to, you can tell him, like, mm, Go, one kilometer, checkpoint, 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 and he can go. And the, the beauty with Enterprise as well is the docking station. So obviously, Spot is running on a battery. The further he goes, the more tricks and tips he's doing, battery drains faster. With a docking station on the Enterprise model only, right? So only the Enterprise model supports uh, the, fast, the fast charging on the docking station. So Spot can literally go, he's gonna see the docking station, it's got a little QR code, and it says, oh, I know this is home. So he will go, register, he reverses in, and he parks. And you can program and say, okay, I've charged now, next point. So literally, Spot could patrol this whole park, if we wanted, without any interaction from a human being. And all that video can be streamed live to someone in the control room, security guards who know all the time what he's seeing. And again, it's 360. So even if he's looking forward, you can still see what's happening around him. Food and beverage manufacturer Nestle East and Southern Africa region has piloted an industrial-scale artificial intelligence-driven plant that reduces carbon dioxide emissions, recycles wastewater, and creates sustainable green products from production processes at its industrial park in Hammondskrall. Natasha Udendahl tells us more. 
The industry first pilot project leveraged partner emissions capture company's white box technology, a machine learning based system that captures CO2 from flue gas emissions. We're incredibly excited and uh, very uh, proud as Nestle to unveil White Box, uh, this pilot project that we've embarked on with the emissions capture company. Uh, it's an incredibly significant project for us as Nestle because it uh, allows us to really take leadership in demonstrating how uh, a private company uh, can practically make a commitment to reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions, particularly carbon dioxide emissions. Data collected from the industrial scale pilot to date, which has been in successful operation for over 8,000 hours, combined with machine learning techniques, demonstrates that White Box can capture between 25% and 70% of Scope 1 CO2 emissions, mostly through direct air capture and energy efficient gas processing using low fuel consumption methods. From a Nestle perspective, we have, uh, just to qualify, three different uh, data points or milestones that we're working towards from a climate change and a, a carbon uh, dioxide emissions reduction. Uh, by 2025, we are working towards a 25% uh, decrease in our emissions. By 2030, we want that to sit at 50%. And by 2050, we want that at 100%, so really net zero. And so um, this project is really in service and many other projects that we're currently exploring looking at getting us as close to 25% and so the, um, the data uh, the particular progress that we're seeing here um, we are anticipating a 25% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions and uh, when uh, industrialized and maybe uh, pushed a bit further uh, potentially even going as high as 30% uh, and closer to 40% so the uh, data as it stands is very promising uh, we're very excited uh, to incorporate Incorporate this as part of our broader mix uh, of initiatives that we're looking towards uh, reducing our carbon dioxide emissions. The green products can be sold directly for animal feed, human food, consumer goods, cosmetics and pharmaceuticals or used to eliminate sulfur dioxide emissions without the need for water. A number of features of this plant that make it unique and first and foremost um, what we're effectively doing is we're, we're tying into Nestle's emission stream, um, extracting those emissions separating out the gases to end up first and foremost with a clear stream of carbon dioxide. We're then taking that carbon dioxide and using it as an input into a chemical process to form baking soda. So what you would have seen outside in the liquid form is a baking soda slurry that's coming out of our gas to liquid contactor, which we then run through a materials handling section of our plant to come out with a high grade, low carbon footprint, green sustainable baking soda. Um, we're already accredited in terms of animal feed grade in South Africa. Uh, we've been tested at food grade and we've been tested at pharmaceutical grades of purity as well for our product. When we talk about the unique features of this, of this particular plant, uh, we do believe that the artificial intelligence we've layered onto it certainly makes this plant unique uh, in terms of the way we can actually monitor and control a process. Uh, the system learns, it's capable of, uh, of adjusting the operating of the plant depending on ambient conditions and other known factors which, implement, which impact the capture process of the CO2 first and foremost and then the production process of the baking soda. The success of the industry first technology on the African continent is taking Nestle to the next phase, where the company will be looking to scale this operation to other factories to deliver significant reductions in scope 1 emissions in the East and Southern African region. The pilot uh, is now concluded. We are now looking and modeling uh, different scenarios in terms of scaling this, uh, firstly this particular uh, plant, so scaling it, uh, and then looking at uh, next steps which would be how do we uh, integrate and how do we incorporate this technology um, in our other operation sites, particularly in South Africa, and then looking at uh, the rest of the East and Southern Africa region region where we operate. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.